The Hawaiians had a very definite kapu system. You could only go after certain species at certain times. You could only fish in certain areas. If you lived in this ahupua'a, you could fish off that coast, but you couldn't go to the next ahupua'a unless you had permission. And right now, it's just open for everybody. The ancient Hawaiians employed a feudal system. The chiefs, known as the Ali'i, imposed strict rules over their subjects. Fishing for certain species during certain times of the year was punishable by death. This was known as the kapu system, and though often used to merely reserve certain foods for the chief's table, it appears that the Hawaiian people had a deep knowledge of and connection to the natural world of which they were a part, and understood the need for its preservation. One closely controlled species was the octopus, or taco. Fishing for this species was banned during their breeding season. At the coming of the end of the ban, scouts would go out onto the reef to assess the coming harvest, and the chief would decide when to lift the kapu. Although much about the kapu system seems harsh and barbaric to some, it did enable the Hawaiian people to sustain themselves and maintain an ecological balance on this remote archipelago for more than 1,200 years. This is a feat that Westerners have failed to achieve in their mere 300 years of occupation. The problem has been that we really haven't done a good job of controlling those things that we have the ability to control. We've chosen not to be very effective at limiting the effects of overfishing. We've chosen not to be very effective at trying to protect those species that are really rare or endemic. And we may be seeing the first extinctions occurring on coral reefs here in Hawaii because so many of our organisms are restricted to so few places here and they're unique. A tiny island in the middle of the South Pacific is a warning of what the future may hold if we refuse to take control of the course that we're on. Easter Island is one of the best examples of how humans are capable of completely wiping out so many species that it eventually led to their own demise. At one time, the island was covered with a lush palm forest and an advanced social order ensued amongst its people. They erected these famous huge stone monoliths as a testament to their technology and creativity. Fossil evidence shows us that at this time, these Polynesians harvested crops and feasted on seafood and birds. Then, about 500 years ago, things began to change. All the trees had been cleared from the island, and fish disappeared completely from their diet. The islands near shore waters had been fished out, and the absence of trees meant that they could no longer build ocean-going canoes to fish further offshore. The island's population had exceeded its limited resources, and the people began to starve. Tribal wars broke out, and they turned to cannibalism. The arrival of slavers, along with smallpox in the early 1800s, all but annihilated the islanders, and their population was reduced to a mere 111 
by the end of the 19th century. Living in the islands of Hawaii can teach us all, everyone on the planet, a lot, because we can see how finite our resources are. We can see that there is no a way to throw our trash. There is no throwing away anymore. The earth is an island. The entire planet is an island. And if we think of it that way, if we chew it up, use it up, burn it up, wear it out, there is no other island to move to.